When we began this class, I was struggling with some internal battles about the type of leader that I wanted to be versus the type of leader I felt I currently was. At that time, I was in the very early stages of leading an adaptive change initiative at my organization. I was struggling with how to help improve the attitudes of some of my team members, and I was filled with some self-doubt. When, we when we went to Outward Bound in October, I went on a hike through the woods one morning before dawn with Jan and one of the Outward Bound guides named Jimmy. It was one of those beautiful, chilly fall afternoons where we could see our breath in front of us, but little else. So it was the perfect environment for reflection. And these challenges were weighing heavily on my mind. As we paused at a little wooden bridge overlooking a stream, I explained my situation to Jimmy because he'd experienced a similar struggle in his own professional life. I asked him bluntly, Jimmy, how did you get through it? How did you turn things around with your team? He paused, thinking deeply. And then he looked at me and he said, I don't know. <laughs> He said, I eventually realized I couldn't control other people's reactions, so I focused on improving myself, and eventually that trickled outward to everyone else. That advice has guided me ever since. The more we put into evolving ourselves, the more it will positively impact our teams. And I think that lesson truly is the core of ICL. Every single member of this double top class is inspiring because each person has looked inside of themselves throughout this process and actively asked, how do I improve? I am grateful for how much I have learned from every single one of you. Because we're limited by time, I will share just a few reflections out of so very many. When we were at Outward Bound, we were thrust into a search and rescue activity, something most of us really haven't experienced in our daily lives. Our friend Rich was assigned the role of chief medical officer, and he performed his duties to such an incredible degree that most of us assumed he had held that position before in his life. If any of us had actually broken our legs out there in the woods, I'm pretty sure we all would have trusted Rich to set it for us with some twigs and an old t-shirt. <laughs> Rich is a solid example of the power of leaning in, to dig in and embrace whatever you're facing calmly and with confidence no matter how unexpected a situation may be. Diana is an example of how you don't have to be the loudest voice in the room to inspire pivotal change. Many times in situations where we would have a group challenge where we were just spinning our wheels, Diana would calmly chime in with the most thoughtful, well-reasoned suggestion. <laughs> and she would always get us back on track. She is a consistent reminder of the value of taking time to observe and of thinking outside of the box. Or Canaan. To be around Canaan is honestly like basking in the warmth of a summer day. You can't help but absolutely love him the moment you meet him because he is so genuine. I have seen him jump into moments of vulnerability with his arms wide open, and he always embraces the growth that comes with that vulnerability. He is a reminder to let others be inspired by the person you are at your core. He's an example of what Michelle explained to us yesterday, that there is a chain reaction that comes from being a good human. Each one of our classmates represents a different leadership style. And that's one of the most helpful lessons that ICL teaches us, that there are many ways to effectively lead. Maybe you're a driver who influences others through action or maybe you're an analyst who consults reliable data before making an informed decision, Rachel. <laughs> or perhaps you're a supporter who seeks to establish harmony across a group, or a socializer who brings vision and charisma to their teams. There is something to learn and adopt from each of those leadership styles, and you don't have to fit into a neat little box. Different situations require different styles, and we are more effective when we honor that and we lean into it. Many of the qualities within myself that I believed were weaknesses at the beginning of this process have turned out to be some of my greatest strengths. As Jane reminded us yesterday, the stories that we tell ourselves become our realities. So change the stories you tell yourself and you'll become a better leader. 
I'd like to conclude by simply saying thank you to all of you for being who you are and for showing up. It has been a privilege to learn from each of you. Thank you. Thank you.